on-screen logo, National Park Service Arrowhead. Oh, you got it, buddy. You know, my bald head is starting to get warm. I put the hoodie on. All right, what we got? Ones. Beautiful. We got some twos. You get your ones in. Good job, sweetie. Isn't that beautiful? A family and friends kayak on the Colorado River through Glen Canyon. They float on green water at the base of 300 foot tall red rock walls below a blue sky. First thing I noticed is just a new feeling. It's like less to worry about. Like you can breathe easier. To see just how beautiful this is. You feel so small in comparison. I feel 30 pounds lighter, right? You just forget about all the woes and you are like, I'm new. It's grounding. It brings you back to your center. It doesn't matter your age, where you come from. Sometimes it just takes getting out here to realize you're made for something more. Jerome Brownlee and his daughter Olivia pause to admire the canyon. On screen text Glen Canyon, your national recreation area. On screen logo National Park Service Arrowhead. The family paddles as a group. They float on green water at the base of 300 foot tall red rock walls below a blue sky. We are kayaking down in Glen Canyon in some of the most beautiful country in the world. Uh, growing up in the inner city of Chicago, um, this is definitely different. Man. My real first experience with nature was in college. Uh, I went to Grand Canyon University, that's where I met my wife. Um, and we were a part of a leadership team and they would take us out into nature and we would backpack and hike and sleep underneath the stars and it was mind-blowing. It was the first time that I had ever just slept on a sleeping bag. We looked at the stars and the whole night and I was just like, that was the most peaceful night's sleep I have ever had in my entire life. We've been enjoying nature ever since. It's been unreal. It's really hard to go back to living an uninspired life once you've been inspired. The group takes a break from paddling to eat lunch. My name is Jerome Brownlee, and our group from top to bottom. It's my wife, Joy. Um, then my oldest daughter is Noel, and then Mariah. Mariah is 11. Noel is 13, she'll be 14 on Monday. Uh, and then Olivia, our little one, she is eight. Okay, also in our group we have Makidra. Uh, Makidra is a close family friend who we took hiking and camping for the first time since she left the military, serving eight years. She was always like, I'm never going to sleep in a tent, never going to do it again, uh, but she loved it. And then she has her son, Dakari, who's 16, and then his little sister, Diana. Jerome and Olivia paddle with maximum effort. The water glistens against a towering red canyon wall. You can see to the bottom, no matter where you are, and it's beautiful, it's so clean. It's beautiful. I wouldn't want to swim right now, I mean, it's not the hot outside, but it is definitely refreshing to put your hand inside and feel that water. Jerome dips his hand into the river. If you're going to be kayaking or on a paddle board out here, uh, you got to be prepared. First thing I, we like to do is make sure we know where we're going uh, and then look at the weather, what the weather's going to be like during that time. We want to make sure we have the proper shoes. We want to make sure we have the proper flotation devices. That water is ice cold. Make sure everybody had enough water in each kayak, make sure everybody had enough food in each kayak, um, and emergency supplies in case something were to happen in the kayak. So try to plan as much as you can. One of the things we always talk about for our family is making sure you have enough bags to take out what you're bringing in. Uh, and make sure you have a little extra so that you can help pick up the parks. Light reflects off the surface of the river. Let's go petroglyph. Yeah, yeah. The family pulls up to a sandy beach. Yes, ma'am. For me, it being outdoors always meant an opportunity for possibility. They hiked down a trail. It's always been awing to me to think that there's something so much bigger than myself that I can actually touch and attain. And that's kind of how it was for my life. Like, things were always too big or you weren't supposed to have that. But once I started touching it and feeling it, I was open, able to open up doors for myself. Yes, you see him right there, Olivia? Yeah. 
That's doing the robot. I think they danced back then too. They definitely danced. So he was breaking moves. But what do you think they saw? They probably saw. It all looks like they're like peaceful food, like things you need to survive, what you could do, and these things could make you happy. The group there looks at pictographs. Right yeah. yeah. I There's people that came before us that lived here, that took care of this land, and we stand on that ground now, and we cannot use it for this short term. We have to protect it for the long term. Dakari and Noel lag behind the group. We've seen some graffiti out here, and it's hard for me to understand why some people would want to ruin the beauty of this place. Jerome and the kids get out of their boats. A lot of people move to Phoenix from all over Detroit, Chicago, New York, and they go, man, there's nothing to do out here. There's nothing to do out here. What they're saying is there's no clubs out here. Like there's no live music happening right now. But in reality, there's a ton of stuff to do out here for people of color. I think the opportunity to actually get out into the park or the way to get out or to know where it is, those are all barriers. The group sets up camp. I believe the outdoors community to be inclusive. I don't think they care who you are, where you're from, as long as you're cleaning up behind yourself and taking care of the land, right? I always tell the kids, especially talking about the night sky, um, I like to tell them, the only thing that I've ever seen that beautiful is your mother. Everyone looks toward the sky. And when it's just so perfect and they shine, and it's almost like you can just reach up and grab it. I keep using the term breathtaking because it makes you gasp. Like you cannot believe that you are part of something so big. Tents blow in the breeze as the stars spin overhead. The Milky Way appears from behind a canyon wall. The sun's first light moves across the canyon walls. Wind shakes plants vigorously. I can be honest and tell you that I was not expecting the wind that we had. When the wind hit, like that was a moment for our little one that she had not experienced before. And so she was like, Dad, I can't. I can't do anymore, Dad, I can't. And she's like, I just wanna go home. And I'm like, I got you, kid. I got you. I'm sitting there paddling, paddling, paddling. I feel like a hamster in a wheel. If you're not necessarily strong, not necessarily a paddler, but understanding your core and your placement in the seats where you're supposed to be, you can get pushed back. You may have to pull off and rest for a moment till the wind dies down, but you also want to be prepared for that. The wind can definitely be dangerous. Anytime you're on the water, I'd highly recommend wearing a life jacket. Not that you get to be relaxed, but it takes a lot of the stress out of what happens if. The group wears life jackets as they paddle. Definitely probably struggled a little bit at first when we lost signal. And then I was like, shut it off. Shut everything off and just connect with what we have out here. My son is 16, so you know that bond between a teenager and a parent is already kind of like at that brink. And I think this helped me and my son a lot to just be able to talk and experience and hey, look at this. Did you see that? oh my goodness, get a picture of that and to experience it together. I, the bond is going to be there forever. It was, it was rejuvenating, yeah. It, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm feeling much better than I would have two days ago. There's nobody that can't be touched by this. It's inclusive. We want everyone to know that we are better together. Dakari and Noel paddle together. And one of the things we love doing is working with youth and helping them to get outside of technology and to connect with nature. Um, and so having the opportunity to bring people out here to see this, first timers, seeing this, like seeing this, like you're, you're done. Forever you are changed, right? You cannot go back the same. And there's a little piece of your heart that will always be here and longing for more of it. Jerome raises his you paddle teach, in triumph. Um, kids to take care of what's around them. They're naturally going to take better care of themselves. Because that fits right along with the National Park mission statement to preserve and protect for future generations. And that's pretty amazing that we could have that and share that with our families. Huge canyon walls rise on either side of the river. You're welcome here. Not only are you welcome, we want you here. We want you to be a part of what's going on. It's an invitation. And who don't like an invitation? It's your park. Come on out here. On-screen text, Glen Canyon, your national recreation area. On-screen logo, National Park Service Arrowhead. On-screen text, 
Learn more at nps.gov slash glca.